Hey everybody, Derek Pascarella here, otherwise known as A-Team, and we're going to be looking at, well, something of a tutorial here today on taking an SD card designed to use GD Menu on the GDMU Optical Drive Emulator for the Sega Dreamcast and converting it to the very feature-rich, much more modern Open Menu menu software. And there'll be a few tools involved throughout the process, uh, but I think by the end of this, anybody interested in doing this themselves will have a very, very clear grasp and a solid understanding of how to do so. First of all, there are three packages we need to download. And of course, these links will all be in the video description. The very first one is going to be Open Menu itself. So from the GitHub repository, we can navigate to the releases section. And here under release candidate 1.1, we can grab the latest package by downloading it here. Next, we're going to need the GD Menu card manager, a great, much more modern uh, SD card management utility than the legacy one by Mad Sheep. And of course, we can grab this latest version and the latest version is absolutely required for our purposes, version 2, right here. And of course you can grab either the um, you know 64-bit or 32-bit or Windows executables for anyone these days. Yeah, just go ahead and grab the 64-bit if you're uh, on Windows. I do not know how stable the Linux and OS X, um, you know, Mac OS builds are. I've heard mixed things. Um, honestly, if I were endeavoring to do this and I didn't have a Windows PC at my disposal, I would spin up a virtual machine just to be sure. Lastly, we will need, also written by Sonic, the artwork editor uh, or the DAT editor. Um, we can grab that from this Dreamcast talk thread. I've also included a direct link in the video description. Um, and of course we want to grab this latest version here. And once all three are downloaded, we can throw them into a dedicated directory like we see here and then get to work extracting them. So first we'll extract the card manager software. We'll extract the DAT tool. Now that we've got both of these, We want to overwrite the open menu files inside of the card manager folder with what we grabbed from the GitHub repository. So if I open this up in 7-zip here, you can see it's nested inside of the menu data folder all of the assets that we need. So I can go over to the GD menu card manager folder, tools, open menu, menu data, and all of this can be dragged directly in and of course we want to overwrite anything that already exists and just like that our card manager software will now be using the latest version of open menu okay so in this sample scenario I've got an SD card that has been outfitted previously to work with the legacy GD menu um, I've only got four games here, a couple of retail uh, disc images and a couple of indie images. And what I want to do is more or less convert this to an open menu SD card. So I'll go ahead and launch the card manager software just like this. If the manager software doesn't automatically detect the proper SD card drive letter, go ahead and select it there. But as you can see, it already knows about all of the uh, games loaded up on this particular, this particular SD card. So really all I need to do in order to perform the conversion is up here, select Open Menu, and then click Save Changes. Let me throw a note in here that uh, it is not worth using the GDI shrinking or truncating uh, option. Um, if you just want to guarantee that all of these games will work without issue. Um, Sonic has done a great job in kind of blacklisting all of the games that have known problems so that it won't shrink them. But, you know, my view is 
if you're going to be doing something like this, if you're going to be using an optical drive emulator like the GDMU in your Dreamcast and you want to get as many games as you can on there, just go ahead and invest in a 512 gigabyte card or even a terabyte card. Just it's it's so much better to know that you've got clean unadulterated <laughs> rips on that card than trying to truncate them and hoping that uh, something's not going to break. You know, there could be those who disagree with this position of mine, but uh, that's my uh, that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So anyway, that out of the way. Let's go ahead and save our changes here now that we've selected open menu. It's going to be building on the fly the disk image for open menu including you know all of the assets, artwork, uh, game labels and such and as you can see just like that it's already done. So what we'll do next close this of course we don't need 7-zip either we'll go ahead and eject the SD card safely and then we'll actually go ahead and boot this SD card up in our GDMU inside of our Dreamcast and take a look to see how it worked, to see if it uh, built the menu properly and of course also to identify missing artwork because a huge portion of what I want to kind of cover here today isn't just how to do the initial conversion of your old GD menu SD card to open menu, but also to cover how you can uh, apply custom artwork, game descriptions, and other forms of metadata. So let's switch over to the Dreamcast now. All right, so we've powered on the Dreamcast, booting it up, and we will see, hopefully, our brand new open menu for the first time after being converted. And there it is. But of course, as I said, missing artwork, this is something we need to address. So Cool Cool Tune looks like it was identified just fine. If I hold the X button, I can actually see a nice zoomed in version of this. If I press Y, I can exit to BIOS. And if you're using um, the VM2 in this case, you can actually uh, have it so that when you exit to BIOS here, it'll automatically select that virtual VMU. For the game you have highlighted, that way you're able to, um, you know, actually copy saves over from a second VMU you would put in, you know, the second slot, and uh, easily copy it over to the virtual VMU for that specific game. And if I press B, I can actually automatically launch Code Breaker, pre-populated with virtually any cheat you would ever want, um, and uh, run it with this game. So that's another great feature of Open Menu. But let's keep looking. We can see that Puyo Puyo Fever, FX Unit Yuki, and Postal have no artwork. So our next step is going to, you know, going to be let's head back to the computer. Let's uh, see what the process looks like to actually add this missing artwork. And then, of course, we will return to the Dreamcast. See you back on the computer. All right, so we're back on the computer. And now what we want to do is first open up the card manager with the SD card inserted. And the way we are going to be correlating uh, artwork to the individual games is through this serial or this game ID. And this game ID is going to be used inside of the artwork editor. So if we open up the dat tool we have to load the dat from a folder and you might be wondering which folder so all we need to do is head to the card manager folder that we've been working out of tools open menu menu data let's go ahead and copy this path like you just saw paste it in select that folder and now what we're going to see is all of the artwork that already exists along with all the metadata and such uh, inside of these um, these database files, these dat files. And to add artwork for the missing entries is quite easy and that's what we're going to do now. So we saw that Cool Cool Tune was covered, right? We can actually search for this serial or this game ID and find it and there it is. We can see, for example, if we search for 
Puyo Puyo Fever. And by the way, remove all hyphens and any non-alphanumeric characters throughout this entire process. I will remind you again shortly. Anyway, if we try to do a search there, we cannot find it. And the same is going to be true for FX Unit Yuki and Postal. So, let's start with Puyo Puyo Fever. I'm going to go up here and choose to add a new entry. It's going to ask me for the title ID. So as I said, no hyphens. Otherwise, you will break this. <laughs> Remove the hyphen. Click OK. Now, I've gone ahead and grabbed, ahead of time, artwork for all three of these games that I'd like to use. So Puyo Puyo Fever, FX Unit Yuki, and Postal. So we want to grab these and make sure they're in PNG format. I'll copy the path to where I've got these. And then over here for artwork I'm going to click Import. I'll paste that path in. Let me see which one was it now. There we go. I can click copy to icon so the thumbnail is automatically generated. Now at this point you have the option to actually fill out metadata like you see here. Um, although you saw when I previewed open menu on the Dreamcast itself a few moments ago, I'm not using the view that lets you scroll through horizontally and shows all of this metadata. It's way too much to keep up with and honestly I'd much rather just scroll through a grid view so you know for demo purposes and really for my real life usage <laughs> I do not worry about any of this stuff I, I just simply don't let's go back take a look FX unit Yuki here is the serial or game ID for that so we'll go ahead add that as a new entry we'll import that artwork copy it to icon and now something a bit interesting and of course done intentionally because I want to show everybody uh, all possible scenarios that can come up with this. Postal along with other indie or homebrew titles does not really have a legitimate unique serial number but that's okay. Uh, the great thing is inside of the card manager we can actually give it one and in fact you may find you want to do this for things like regional variants etc. So I've given it the name T Post. So go ahead and add a new entry. Import the artwork, copy it to icon, boom. Those three games instantly added. Now all I need to do is save this back to the folder. So where was that folder again, right? It was inside of the card manager, tools, open menu, menu data, and of course you can see icon, metadata, and box files in there. So again, we'll copy this path. And we select this folder to overwrite. Tool is working. And it's done. That's all we needed to do. And if we check out the timestamps, we can see that they were just modified a moment ago. So now that the artwork portion has been done, I can close this. Returning to the card manager now that I've modified the uh, ID for postal and now that the new artwork files are residing in their proper place, I can click save changes and open menu will be rebuilt with all of the new artwork and metadata we just made changes to as well as it'll push the change to the game ID we see here for postal. Alright, so that's been done. We'll go ahead, eject our SD card, throw it back in the Dreamcast, and see what we get. Okay, SD card is back in the GDMU, Dreamcast is powering on, the moment of truth right around the corner. Will we have the missing artwork? Of course we do, would I ever steer you wrong? So here we can see Puyo Puyo Fever looking good, FX Unit Yuki, great game by the way but uh, I like playing it on the PC Engine <laughs> um, and Postal all here and uh, I just want to show you if you press the start button you do have some options here for ways you can you know modify behavior or even change the theme for open menu so style this would be uh, that grid view 
or that even scrolling view to uh, mimic the old GD menu, though I don't know why you would want that. And uh, you've also got the line description uh, view. So actually, let me just show you what that looks like. This is what I meant before about the metadata. If you've actually got all of that in, yeah, it looks pretty cool, but of course there's nothing for these. Um, but in my view, you spend a whole hell of a lot of time making sure this data is accurate. Um, and also, it just, uh, it's a bit more, it's a bit slower to scroll through your games. You know, we've got four on here, okay. But when you start getting several hundred, um, like I've got, it's a bit tedious. So I, I prefer that grid view. Um, aspect ratio does exactly what you think it does. Beep will actually um, cause the VMU to give off its little classic tone or not when open menu launches. Sorting you can do by name, by region, genre. So I just leave it at default, which is going to be by name. Filter. So if you are using the metadata uh, as it's you know kind of available, you can filter out uh, by different genres if you'd like. Multi-disc, this is a really great feature. Um, remember those game IDs we were looking at before? Well, figure, let's say something like Shenmue. Four discs, Shenmue 2 rather. Um, well, Shenmue 1 is what, three discs and a passport. So let's say Shenmue 2, four discs. All four discs share the same game ID. So if you select hide here for multi-disc, that means you only get one entry inside of open menu for Shenmue 2, you only see the, the box art once. There'll be a little indication at the bottom right of the thumbnail that says, hey, this is four discs, and when you go to launch it, it'll actually let you choose which of the four discs you want to run. Really, really cool. But as you can see, Open Menu is up and running. Uh, we saw how easy it was to convert our card from the legacy GD menu format. We saw how easy it was to add artwork. Um, and just for good measure, we'll go ahead and launch one of these games. <laughs> there was a time when Open Menu, in its early days, did have a bit of compatibility issues with things like homebrew or indie releases. Um, but I have really thrown everything at this software, and it is tremendous. It works fantastically. Everything is supported. Um, it's just, uh, and it's really great. It's totally open source menu software for. You know, arguably the most, uh, well, not arguably, it is the most common ODE among Dreamcast users, and in my view, uh, the best one. Um, it's the one I prefer. I do all of my development and testing on it, and I use it for my daily driving for, you know, actually gaming. Um, yeah, it's uh, really great. It's going to continue to see firmware updates. Um, if you use a VM2, I'm sure you've seen my other video uh, on it, but if you use a VM2, you can get per game automatic virtual VMU switching if you use open menu. Um, so it's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic solution all around. And I wanted to put this video together because I know there's been some ambiguity over, you know, how to use open menu, how to do your first time setup, configuration, all of that. Um, but as you can see, it's really, really quite simple and not nearly as hard <laughs> as you might have been, uh, might have been thinking it is. And with that, we'll wrap up, uh, wrap up our video here today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. And stay tuned for more. Thank you.